everybody, this is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome back to the channel, and you'll never guess who's sitting behind the camera right now. No, it's not Santa Claus. Good guess, it's not. It's Ethan Moses. Yes, and we're going to be doing a special project today involving my enormous collection of homemade pinhole cameras. What are we going to do with the pinhole cameras? Joe's house is small, I don't have enough room, the cameras aren't being used, and I'm thinking it was really Ethan's suggestion that I should document the entire last 25 years of my pinhole photography in more of a formal, maybe like a book project. So we're going to be taking photographs of all my pinhole cameras I've made. We're going to try to find example images from each one of the cameras, and this will take, of course, a matter of weeks or months, and also my camera making sketch journals, and we're going to hopefully put this together at some point in the future as a really cool book that'll be uh, self-published available for purchase. But today's job is we're going to go through all the cameras one by one, uh, we're going to sit here and review the cameras and let's see how they work and everything, and then we're going to go out and photograph them. Ethan brought some, some cool lighting strobe setup, so we'll be able to do that, so stay tuned. I think so. One of us will be hidden. Okay, I'll be hidden. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Joe and Ethan Moses. Welcome, Ethan, to the studio. Aren't hey, you thanks, Joe. <laughs> yeah, aren't you amazed at how large my studio it's is? It's enormous. Yes. It takes the entire volume of your computer screen, your phone screen. It's just... <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, but television studios are really dirty and small. You just can't tell it on camera. But here we are. We're going to be going through a little review of all of my pinhole cameras. At least I'm excited. As yeah, you're excited. As many as we can find, at least, you know, that's, I might have forgotten a few of them. But the very first camera we'll talk about, I built this in the latter half of the 1990s, and it is a massive thing, and it is an oak falling plate camera. And what is a falling plate camera, you might ask? Thank you for asking. Um, it enables you to have up to eight negatives in the camera at any one time. You can put it in front of me. Yeah, we'll put it in front of Ethan. <laughs> so there is a pull shutter on the front. It just lifts up like that. Very simple. Pinhole is fixed there. On the bottom of the camera is a base with a tripod bushing and there's a couple little feet here and there's a handle on top to carry it. And then the real business of the camera is in the back here. Um, so there's two knobs on the sides near the rear that flip up and down. We'll talk about what they do. And then there's two little screws that you pull out like this to reveal the inside of the back of the camera like that. And first of all, the lid has a light trap lip like this. There's a couple sets of springs and that light trap goes in these slots here and that forms the light seal. It uses these matte board film holders and what they are is of course matte board, heavy cardboard, and I have these little sleeves of, of black paper. So you basically take an 8 by 10 inch sheet of paper, you slip it in here, and you make an 8 inch square part that you that will be exposed to the pinhole. There's a series of slots. There's two slots on each side, and the they alternate in order, so you have to put the film holders in their order. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just use three of them for now. But the slots alternate up, down, up, down, up, down. And there's also two uh, curved little brass tubes. So just to show you one of the film holders, the bottom two holes rest on the tubes and the rest of the film holder can't go any further because the two little pins here that hold it in place being pushed by the springs on the back. So in position, the camera 
holds the film holders like that. You take your picture with the pinhole shutter, and then when you want to drop the film plate, pardon me, Ethan, you raise, in this case, both notches, and that film holder falls to the bottom of the camera face down, and the next film holder is in position, and because the notches on the sides of that film holder are in the opposite orientation, then you would, you would move these two operating knobs the opposite direction to get them to fall. You preload the camera with eight negatives, and then you can carry the camera around in the field and uh, use it and have eight pictures ready to go. Now, this was the first falling plate camera that I built. It attempted to solve the problem of how do you have multiple pictures, right, out in the field. But in attempting to solve that problem, it presents a couple problems on its own. Uh, one of which is you can tell by the way we were fumbling around with the film holders that if you mishandle the camera, that they could fall off this ledge and get jammed and they won't operate properly. And also, you don't want to like tip the camera over once the, the film holders have fallen because now they're going to jam the other film holders from falling properly. So you have to sort of carefully orient the box. If you put it in the trunk of your car, you don't want it to fall over when you make a sharp turn and all that. So it had some, some design issues that needed to be ironed out. But needless to say, in spite of the limitations of this camera, I succeeded in actually making a number of really good pictures with it, including that one picture from Chaco Canyon. Yeah, so I really love this camera because it is a problem that I deal with all the time is wanting to shoot a lot of uh, large format paper negatives, but also it is a solution that I never would have thought of. <laughs> yeah. um, and I remember before I met Joe, I had seen his original YouTube video on this camera, and I really love um, sort of the inventiveness of it, and I love um, sort of this mechanical mechanism that slides up and down. It's super duper simple, um, yeah. and it it opens up one some possibilities but it also makes me think about like how else you might do exactly the same <laughs> yeah. thing yeah yeah which which kind of is a segue into the next camera the next major camera i built is right below ethan there so that eight inch square format camera led to um me doing more sketch journaling on how i can make a, an improved version of that falling plate camera. This is a four inch square version. It's made from galvanized steel, which you can solder. And then it's covered with this craft foam, which is really a terrible idea. It's made of brass, essentially, in the front. There's a pull shutter here that's just making a little sliding brass piece with a square tube. I have some little brass pieces that were used as viewing uh, dots, and you, you line that up with a pinhole for the side angle. So the main aspect of this camera is pulling off the back of it. There's a little handle here made from galvanized steel. There's a little brass handle soldered to it. Again, the same philosophy of film plates, but instead of having two sets of notches on the side of the film plates, I'm using a single set of notches on the top. And the main improvement here is I have a lip in the bottom of the camera that keeps the bottom of the film plates from falling down into the camera body. And the, the way you operate this was done rather cleverly, I thought, is I have this little square piece of brass with a little brass knurled knob, and you either push it on one side or the other, and it's actually three square tubes clustered inside one another with this square protrusion that interlocks the film plates from falling. So that's that's how it sits there. And when you want to drop it, you just move the little knob to the other hole and it falls down to the bottom. So I have some questions about this. Um, I really, one, love that you've taken it and made it uh, more portable, right? Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's a uh, design that, that lends itself to going out and taking a lot of pictures. Um, why did you choose to make this knob go into both sides rather than connecting it so you push and pull it. I can't sides. remember the exact reason actually. So there is a medium sized hollow brass tube that goes the full length, the full width of the camera and it's open on both ends. Then I have a larger size brass tube that's a sleeve and soldered to it is the T that comes down. But then there's an inner part that it has to push against 
Mm -hmm. And that goes up into the inner one. There's a slot in here on the bottom of the inner one. So that was the, the that was just the design. It, it, it necessitated that, so you couldn't run all the way through. So I, I wonder if it's like a better design like this because you can always keep this knob pushed in on one side when you transport it. Yeah, yeah, right. And you won't accidentally trip it, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, so you, I could have, the challenge would have been if I had one continuous piece of brass, I would have had to solder the protrusion inside the other piece, which you mm -hmm. couldn't really do, mm -hmm. right? So you just don't want to lose this, but it does fit pretty snugly in there. It's not going to go away or anything, but it's a kind of a nice solution. I made six film plates for it, and they're made from galvanized steel, spray painted. And of course, I didn't use the right primer, so there's a little bit of flaking of paint and just a laser cut labels, but it's a nice little solution, and it makes pretty good images, I thought. You know those really remind me of the septums from the Graphmatic pack? Uh, yes, it does. I think that's really clever. So I also love that you have the same sort of light baffle in the back of this guy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, light leaks are always a problem with my prototypes. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. So when you want to drop the plate, you just tilt the camera slightly down, and you hear it there fall. It just makes that noise. <laughs> and... It's super good. Yeah, and, and sometimes you'll... That's I've had, you know, some of these designs, it takes a little bit of engineering to get it so it's super reliable, which is eventually will be a segue <laughs> to the next camera. <laughs> so I think I love everything about this camera except for... I think this is one of the ugliest cameras oh, I've ever seen. Oh, it is. The foam. What, what is up with the foam, Joe? Well, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> it looks like human skin. <laughs> it's human. Yeah, it's it's decaying human skin, <laughs> yes. And well, it was kind of ugly looking galvanized steel with solder, which oh. doesn't look like brass. And I uh -huh. could have built it out of brass, probably should have, right? But this, this, again, was a prototype. And I think it was like I discovered, oh, galvanized steel is a heck of a lot cheaper than sheet brass, and you can get it at any hardware <laughs> store. You can cut it with a paper trimmer, and great. it solders easy. And it was like an instant solution to a problem, mm -hmm. right? That, that yeah, it's ugly. Yeah. I like soldering uh, galvanized steel. I like how like the the lead or um, the tin will go under the zinc. Oh yes, yes, super yes. crazy. So yeah, this probably deserves to be built as a new camera, another design. Yeah. Maybe four inch square, but a little bit smaller and a little bit more efficient and made of brass. Obviously. Maybe that would hold uh, yeah. 20 plates. 20 plates, right? But yeah, you're right. It's not very pretty. I admit that. But it's an interesting design and it sure s solves a problem. I mean, and it's super cool. <laughs> So then we get to the third generation uh, of falling plate camera. So this one originally just had a single plate on the bottom that I attached to a tripod. At the time I was using homemade tripods. It didn't have an adjustable head. So I made a hinged plate, a door hinge, a second plate, and there's a strap of metal here with thumb screws and you can adjust it. But anyway, it's a falling plate camera. It works essentially the same as that the one you just saw uh, with a single knob on top, a pull shutter like that. So the back of it, there's two thumb screws. The body of the camera is constructed from a frame of thin wooden sticks and then the body is covered in aluminum flashing. Now this flashing comes in rolls about yay wide and you can cut it with a paper trimmer. It's glued onto the wooden frame with uh, epoxy. Is that a roofing material? or Yes, it's, a, it's like a roofing I think. Yeah. I think this is a beautiful camera. So I have a plate of galvanized steel that's a weight, a, a weight system. This one has eight film holder plates. Again it uses the idea of a ledge here. The ledge is about however high it is, like a quarter inch. When you put the film holder plate in, you need a clearance up on top of less than that. So the plate can't jump the ledge if it vibrates, right? But essentially it's a little pin that slides and falls down to the bottom of the camera. And this is a five by, well, okay, it started out as a five by eight format, where you can take an eight by 10 sheet, split it in half. But then I discovered that I had more room. I, I used to, I had different film holder plates originally, but I discovered I could make larger film holder plates roughly six by nine and a half if you go that big. And it's a nice little design. 
lightweight. There's a little framework of wood down in the middle where I have the uh, tripod nut. Mm -hmm. And everything inside the camera is adhesive craft felt lined for flocking and uh, JB Weld epoxy. I think this one came out really slick. For the paper negatives, I, I simply use a loop of painter's masking tape on the back side of the paper and stick it to each plate. And just making sure you don't want to have the paper go up interfering with the notch. So, so I think, you know, as, as we go through these, yeah. this one, I can tell you spent a little bit more yeah. time as yeah. the, the, you know, design got better yeah, yeah, and yeah. you were sure that the prototype was going to work. Yeah. Like the movement on this is beautiful. Of, yeah, I don't it's know brass, that I have anything that moves so smooth. Yeah, it's a brass tube soldered to a brass plate, and then I'm using this wire that's, it's floral arrangement wire. It's a metal wire with a green painted coating on it. And uh, it, yeah, it's pretty darn smooth, all right. It's smooth and it holds in position. It's yeah. like exactly the perfect tension, which is just like a little detail that yeah. is great. <laughs> yeah, and the simple little guillotine style shutter, you know. And, it turns out this little hinge mechanism on the base was probably not really needed. It just go get a Bogan tripod, use the mm -hmm. Bogan, and I would probably, if I went back to using this more often, I would just convert it back to a single wooden plate. But one of the things I learned about this camera was having a low center of gravity, a heavy wooden plate and a lightweight body, it lowers the center of gravity and makes it more stable on the tripod. Because the, really the center of stability on your tripod is where the three legs meet. Mm -hmm. And if you have a heavy camera like this big wooden one, the center of gravity is way up near the middle of the camera and there's a lot of leverage, mm -hmm. right? So I, I wonder, you have all of these um, tripod blocks, it's just a, you know, yeah, a yeah, nut in a yeah. block of wood for strapping your pinhole cameras. Yeah, yeah. Were those before or after this camera? It was, it was after. And, and were those influenced by this rig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can see it. Yeah. Anyways. Is, is this wood inside or this is all metal? It's a wooden frame. It's mm -hmm. that little quarter inch stick, square sticks. Now I had to do a little reinforcement of the corners here of the lid. This, these are thin strips of aluminum that have been JB welded and eventually they start to peel off so I just use little gussets of gaffer's tape which just is sort of the universal material <laughs> for any kind of camera building. Since I have met Joe I've gone through an entire roll of gaffer's tape <laughs> like uh, 10 times faster than I ever did before. And the metal plate of course keeps the plates pushed down toward the front and the whole thing of course like the other camera is you do have to be careful about how you handle the camera right if you upturn it then the the fallen plates are going to jam the other one so it, that's probably the limitation in in this design it seemed like this camera could take a little bit more rattling than yeah, the other one probably. do you think that's just because it's smaller and has finer tolerance or it might be yeah of course, this is more of a landscape oriented, where this is square. Mm -hmm. All three of these cameras were sort of the intention was to solve a problem about how do you carry multiple films out in the field without resorting to expensive and heavy film holders. So I, I think it's really amazing that this is, you know, we decided to do this chronologically, and this is where you started, right? So I think, <laughs> let's make a pinhole camera, it's the simplest way to go. Oh and, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's not, we're going to make uh, the most complicated pinhole camera to start off with. Yeah. <laughs> It seems tough, but you've, you've yeah, done succeeded. something really cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this was part one of a multi-part series. I must have shot almost three memory cards full of video reviewing all the cameras with Ethan. So look forward to more in this new series about Joe's pinhole cameras. Yeah, this represents uh, the work of over 25, almost 30 years of tinkering. And uh, I hope that you guys get some inspiration out of these camera designs, some of the ideas I employed, and maybe that'll give you ideas for making your own pinhole cameras. But I want to also thank Ethan for all the time he took. He spent an entire day out of his busy schedule at my house here, reviewing the cameras and photographing all the cameras in a studio lighting setup in preparation for hopefully a future book about all of these. Well, I want to encourage you guys, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.